Ned, the concept of consciousness is something that fascinates many people. It certainly has occupied uh, your career, and I've, uh, I've dabbled in it myself, and uh, it, it's very exciting. And as you explore the world of thinking about consciousness, there are people, uh, some philosophers, many uh, of, of uh, d certain religious persuasions, particularly Eastern religions, Buddhism, parts of Hinduism, but, 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 but many philosophers who would look at consciousness because of its uniqueness and strangeness and say that it is something not just immaterial, but something even more fundamental than the material, the most fundamental thing that we can find in the universe. How, how do you view that? Oh, I don't agree with this point of view at all. I think consciousness is part of the natural world. I don't even think consciousness is the only part of the mind. I think there are other aspects of the mind that are not derived from consciousness. I think that's true of cognition. I think the thinking part of the mind is partly separated from consciousness and is, and is not determined by it. And similarly, I think that tables and chairs and mountains um, yeah. and the, um, um, the sun are not created by consciousness. I think they're there independently and would have existed even if human consciousness hadn't existed. So I take the naturalistic point of view. I don't think that consciousness creates the world or even creates the rest of the mind. Well, uh, th there are physicists and cosmologists who are um, very disturbed by consciousness. Uh, certainly in quantum mechanics, we've seen that in the history of quantum mechanics, where consciousness, and some have thought to be an intimate part of explaining how quantum mechanics works and, and, and is expressed in the world. That's on the microscopic level. On the macroscopic level, some cosmologists would, when you push them hard, they have a very physicalist, naturalist explanation to the universe, to the Big Bang, and before the Big Bang. And if you push far enough, some of them will say, at the end, it has to be some sort of a mind or a consciousness, and maybe not God, but I don't know what, some sort of a consciousness. So this concept of consciousness, you know, you push far enough in certain directions, and surprisingly, it keeps coming back. Well, I think the reason it keeps coming back is because it's a mystery. And when, that is, what's mysterious is why the physical basis of consciousness is the physical basis of it, as opposed to something else. Now, people in their, um, physicists in their work, find they encounter mysteries too. The mystery of how the wave packet is reduced in, in, in um, quantum mechanics and the mystery of the beginning of the cosmos. And so it's a natural human tendency but one that should be resisted, to try to explain one mystery with another. <laughs> Maybe the idea is we're better off if we only have one mystery instead of two. But there, I see absolutely no reason to think that the mystery of consciousness needs to be brought in to explain the mystery of the beginning of the cosmos or to, be, or to explain quantum mechanics. Well, uh, it, certainly it's, it's a hard connection to make, but um, if I stop to think about it, uh, granted there, these are multiple mysteries, and they're massive mysteries. The questions about quantum mechanics or the questions about you know, what's before the Big Bang or whenever, whenever you want to push it back uh, seem insoluble, and they seem to have the same character of insolubility that, that, that consciousness has, the, the, the experiential part of consciousness. And so some people, it's not me, I mean, there's, there's, there's a, a large number of very diverse kinds of thinkers. That's what impresses me. They're very diverse in their thinking. Yeah. There's some hardcore cosmologists, and, and you know, we all know their names if, you, if you're interested in the, in the field, uh, as well as you know, many people from Eastern religion traditions over the centuries. And, and they don't know each other. They don't speak their same language, literally and figuratively. And they're sort of saying the same thing. Yeah, I agree they're saying the same thing, but that just shows the ubiquity of this mistake. <laughs> it's such an easy mistake to make. It's the mistake of thinking you can't have more than one mystery. <laughs> <laughs> well, One completely independent mystery. Yeah. Well, I, I, certainly we can allow that there can be lots of independent mysteries, but it, it is certainly possible that, mm -hmm. th that when you get to these core fundamental mysteries mm -hmm. and, and you reduce the number of mysteries that we find maybe to two or three, that maybe there's some connection between them. Okay, look, I'll admit <laughs> that 
there is a little bit in what you say. That is that it is, after all, other things being equal, it is better to have fewer mysteries. So that does give you a tiny reason, but it's so tiny. You need hey, to make I'm it happy all for a small reason. I'm happy. I'm, I feel completely vindicated. <laughs> what you need is some reason to think that consciousness could come in. Certainly, in the um, in the case of the cosmos, um, it seems like what's really going on is they're thinking, well, what could have been the beginning? It's got to be something. Um, intelligent or animate or something like that. You know, so, many think that way, certainly among uh -huh. Eastern traditions and religious people, but I'm talking about some very hardcore uh, cosmologists who, who, who fight against any issues of God or theism or anything like that. Well, I but think God think, is coming in by the back door. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's just that the, the, at the end of the day, there just seems to be something missing. That, yeah. And they turn, they don't say God, but yeah. they would say, mind or consciousness and they'd say it very defensively and sheepishly and they say i hope hope you're not uh -huh. going to tell anybody about what i said you know uh -huh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i'm unmoved uh, i think there is a tiny little reason to have i mean a tiny uh, uh, um, consideration to have fewer mysteries but i think to make it at all plausible you have to have some reason other than that why these two particular mysteries ought to come to the same thing 